In this example, we're being asked to determine the polynomial function that fits through the points 1, 4, 2, 0, and 3, 12. So let's go ahead and get started. Under solution, uh, the first thing we need to note is that um, we have three data points. So we can fit a polynomial of order two through them. So that would be a second degree uh, polynomial, which is a quadratic equation, okay, a quadratic function. So the general form of a quadratic function is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And so from this point on, we're gonna follow the same kind of procedure that we followed in the previous example where we fit a linear function through two data points, except now it's just a quadratic function through three data points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, write uh, a general polynomial of, of order two <clears throat> through each one of these data points, okay? So for the point one comma four, what do we have here? Well. We say, notice I put a colon here. We're gonna say when f of x equals four, we substitute in one for the x value. So we say four equals a times one squared plus b times one plus c, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing for the other two data points, two comma zero, two comma zero. So we're saying when f of x equals zero, we substitute the number two in for x. Okay, and then our last data point was three comma 12. So we say 12 equals a times three squared plus b times three plus c. Now these are our three equations with three unknowns. Okay, so here we have, we have three equations with three unknowns, A, B, and C, okay? So let's rewrite these three equations uh, in, a, in a little bit more, um, you know, compact manner. So we would say the first equation is really just A plus B plus C equals four. The second equation would be four A plus 2b plus c equals zero. And then the third equation is 9a plus 3b plus c equals 12, okay? So I just evaluated those uh, constant terms there. Well, this should be a form that we're familiar with, okay? So at this point, it's a three a system of three equations, three unknowns. I'm gonna say let's solve it as a matrix, okay? Because three equations, three unknowns is a little more convenient to put it in matrix form. So I'm gonna write this as an augmented matrix. So we've got the coefficients one, 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 and four here. And then we have four, two, one, zero, and then I have nine, three, one, 12, okay? <clears throat> so from here, we're gonna perform elementary row operations. So I'm gonna say negative four row one plus row two to change row two. And then I'm gonna say negative nine row one plus row three to change row three, okay? And again, we're just using row one, so row one is gonna stay the same. Um, and if we look at this first operation, we create a zero here, and then we'll have, let's see, negative four plus two is negative two, and then negative four plus one is negative three, and then we have negative 16 here. And then on our second operation here, we're using row one to change row three, so we generate a zero here, and then we'll have negative nine plus three is negative six, negative nine plus one, is uh, negative eight, and then negative 36 plus 12 would be negative 24 here, okay? So we're moving right along now. <clears throat> we have a lot of negatives you know, floating around here. I prefer to um, you know, eliminate negatives when I can. So I'm gonna say negative row two to change row two, 
and negative row three to change row three. And these operations just allow us to, um, you know, multiply each of these rows by a constant so we can, by a non-zero constant, so we can, you know, get rid of some negatives here. Again, you know, multiple ways of tackling this. This is just what I like to do, get rid of negatives. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use row two to cancel out this six down in row three. So I'm gonna say, you know, negative three row two plus row three to change row three. So notice I have not really done anything with row one and I'm not changing row two, I'm just using row two to change row three. So I have a zero here and you know, we have negative three times two is negative six plus six is zero. And then we'll have a negative nine uh, plus eight is negative one. And then what's uh, three times, I'm sorry, uh, negative three times 16 is a negative 48 plus 24 is negative 24, okay? Um, so uh, we're, we're at this stage here. That's not quite uh, row echelon form yet, um, <clears throat> but it's, you know, I guess close to row echelon form. Uh, so at this point, if you want to, you can go ahead. You know, the problem doesn't exactly say what method to use to solve this. So if you want to, you can uh, go ahead and, um, you know, keep reducing this into row echelon form and then reduce row echelon form if you wanted to. But the problem doesn't... Uh, the problem doesn't say uh, give a give a exact method to do this, so I'm just going to put this back into equation form and call this a plus b plus c equals four, and then two b plus three c equals sixteen, and then I have negative c equals negative twenty four. So so clearly here c equals twenty four, no question there and then uh, we can substitute c into uh, the second equation and we would get 2b plus 3 times 24 equals 16 and so you know be mathematically proper you have you need to write b equals don't don't say don't put another equal sign there that that would be incorrect uh, write specifically what b is equal to so we're gonna have 16 minus 3 times 24 and then you know divide by two, and so I get negative 28 here for B, and then we're gonna solve for A here. We're gonna say, you know, A minus 28 uh, plus 24 equals four, and so what do we get? We get, um, you know, negative 28 plus 24, and then uh, I think we get uh, A equals positive eight. So we're not quite done yet. We're almost there. This is almost the final answer. Finally, we would say, finally, the polynomial we're looking for is f of x equals 8x squared minus 28x plus 24. Okay, and that's what you would box in with a straight edge. Remember, we had f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, now we've solved for a, b, and c, and that concludes this example.